Hi, so my name's Tom. I'm currently learning C Sharp right now um, via Solo Learn, which is a good website if you're interested. And I went through the properties section recently, and it was a little confusing to me at first how get and set worked and why within a class I would want to use them or how to use them as opposed to having fields that are private or public. Um, and I thought I would give you the perspective of someone who's learning. So obviously I'm not, I'm not an expert and if you want the purely accurate technical def definition, there's probably better resources. But for someone who may has, be coming from a similar perspective uh, as someone who's learning C Sharp, it, perhaps it, it could be insightful for you. So the first thing I want to do is create a class as an example. So we'll make it a class on a person. And we're going to create a couple fields. So um, why don't we start with age? Yeah, obviously, age is probably more of an int than a string. So right now we have a class person that has uh, a field age that's private. And because it's private, it means that we can't access it from our main part of our program. So if I try to instantiate uh, a person, um, and so I would say something like person uh, Tom equals new person, Uh, I run this, no output, so no errors right now, uh, but if I tried to say tom.age equals 30, um, I would get, I would assume I would get an error, and there it is, is inaccessible due to its protection level. So how do we get around this? Well, the easiest option is we change this field from private to public. And now, because it's public, I have access to it. Um, because I'm only storing it, uh, I, I don't display it, so let's display it. Console.write line tom.age. And now I have uh, access to it, and I'm able to display it. Hopefully, let's give it a sec. There it goes. So it's public. The field's public, I'm able to access it, I can change it to whatever I want, and I change it to 25, I need to change it to 25 and display. Now, it's a better idea to have more control over your fields than just make them be public. And using um, properties um, and their accessors like get and set, you can actually do some pretty cool things. Uh, and it's probably easiest to explain through an example. So let's go back and make this private again. Now what we're going to do is create a property. So let's make this public um, int age. Um, and the reason uh, I did this as a capital A is just um, convention. It's something that I guess within the C-sharp community you have your, your field as lowercase and then your property would be uh, uppercase for the first letter. And I have two options uh, or two things I can use uh, to, to adjust age now. I can use get and set. So at the most basic level, I can use git to access what's in um, my private field. So in this case, let's return age. And then I can use set to actually store into the private field. So for set, let's say age equals um, value. Now value is a special uh, word that basically allows me to assign age in my program um, uh, 
a value, in this case an integer. So what this means is um, I still can't use lowercase a. I still can't access age. If I try to run tom to age equals 25, what we have now, I will still get, I would expect, to be inaccessible. Um, and I forgot some semicolons in there as well. Again, told you I'm, I'm new to this. So let's run this now. It's inaccessible. Um, but if I said tom.age, instead of trying to access the field, which is private, but act, tried to access the property, um, which is public, I believe now I should be able to, and I'll change this as well, from lowercase to capital, uh, to have this work. Great. So at first, this seems like, well, this seems like a silly thing that we can do to make stuff needlessly complex. But in reality, it opens up some very interesting possibilities. Uh, let's start with age, for example. If, if you're talking about a person, you're not going to want to have someone who has an age that is negative. So if a user or your program tried to set an age that was negative, you would probably want to restrict that from happening. So you can say uh, age equals value, but let's say if value is greater than or equal to zero, and age equals value. And hopefully I did this right. And so it still displays 25, which is right. But if I tried to say Tom is negative 20, 234, and ran this. And it's still running, running. It's taking a long time. It's display zero. Uh, so it, it didn't actually set the value. So using this restriction, you can actually allow yourself to have more control on how your variables work. So you have some base types of variables. You have integers, booleans, strings, but using get and set, you can tailor these types of variables to your own uh, specific use cases that may actually better model what you're trying to, to set up, like someone's age. In the same way, I try to think of like a class as a way of to describe something um, and different properties about it. Like you have a class of a person uh, which may have um, details about their age. Well, um, we can use properties and their accessors to, to even make that model a little bit more accurate. We can say you should only be able to um, set the value if it's uh, a realistic number. Um, and another way, we can do this uh, with strings as well. So if we said private string gender, and we wanted to make another property for that, we'll say public string gender get and return gender and set if gender or if value equals female or value equals male. And obviously you may want to add some some additional options like maybe capital F or capital M or just the F or M single 
character um, abbreviation, but this at least shows you some options. Again, we can say now if that's true, then we will actually set gender equal to value. And again, value is this special word that the property will get when you're trying to, to write to it with this, the set. So now I can say tom.gender equals male. And console.writeLine tom.gender. So now our class Tom, oh let's let's make me 30 again, is 30, I'm 30 and I'm male. Um, and again, if I was to mess up and say I am uh, a blue as my gender, once it finally finished running, it would show that uh, it didn't work. So it, it shows 30, but it doesn't actually write my actual gender out. So you have a lot of options there. Um, what about get? Uh, we seem to be always just using get return gender. Well, you don't have to. Um, we could um, use a variable and return something off of that. So, for example, I don't know why you would really want to do this, for, but we could say private int hands um, and let's make a public string or public int hands um, and we will say get return hands times five. and set uh, we'll just say set hands equals value And I'm just making sure I didn't make a mistake there. And while that's going, I would say tom.hands equals two. And we'll make this mail again. Console.write line tom.hands. And what this did is I'm storing the int, which we're going to say is actually the number of hands, uh, and it returns the number of fingers I have, assuming we have five fingers on a hand. So you could actually store your variables as something and return something else. You could return some expression that you wanted to on those numbers, um, which is kind of uh, could be helpful. I could see that being helpful. So this is kind of how I ended up playing with the class. Um, let me see if there's one other uh, item that would be of interest. And